We're tapping about 1,000 service members, mostly from the Army and from the Navy, to build Biden's pier off the coast of Gaza for humanitarian aid, they say. It's just one example. New military estimates say the predicted cost has already doubled to about $320 million. But despite our massive debt and deficit, I think this is the least of our immediate concerns because the area itself is within range of Hamas rockets and has already come under attack by mortar shells. And after getting three young service members killed in their sleeping quarters in Jordan just the other month, plus two Navy SEALs, and having dozens of troops in the region suffer from traumatic brain injuries and the like, from having to deal with Iran and its proxies, just what are we going to accomplish with this peer, aside from getting more of our young people killed in a foreign conflict by helping both sides? Well, according to Jamal Boatman, we're going to get a bunch of new refugees from Gosling from this pier, but I don't see that as an accomplishment. Joining us now to discuss is John Burns, a senior advisor for Concerned Veterans for America. John, thanks for being back tonight. Thanks for having me on as always, and congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. So there was a House Armed Services Committee hearing today in which the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, admitted to Florida Congressman Matt Gates that it's entirely possible that our troops will come under fire while building this pier. What does their exchange tell you? Well, it doesn't really tell me anything I didn't know, but for, for the civilian viewer, for the person who hasn't served, this is just one of the multiple complications that occur in an operation like this that, that contingency planners, the leaders, the generals, the admirals have to think about. And it's clear from listening to that exchange and from the news over the past few weeks, actually since since President Biden proposed this, that this is just all kinds of a bad idea. And I say that as somebody who's been a combat engineer, somebody who's who's done humanitarian relief missions overseas with the Marine Corps, uh, there's just so many things that can go wrong with, with this project. You know, and also another point that Congressman Gates pointed out to the, the defense secretary, he asked, he, well, he said that, you know, Biden's promised us over and over when it comes to these foreign conflicts, including this one, Israel and its fight against Hamas terrorists, that there will be no American boots on the ground. But he says if we're putting boots on the ground to build the pier, I know it's not exactly combat related, but the defense secretary is also saying they have the right to defend themselves if they're fired upon. So they may have to then fight back. So does that mean that this kind of is boots on the ground. Uh, you know, Secretary Austin says, no, it's not. But Congressman Gates said it's just kind of a, a difference without a real distinction. So do you think that this constitutes in some ways, at least boots on the ground? You know, I think it's it's as close as you can get. I think, you know, they're playing cute with the words boots on the ground. This is essentially boots on the ground. There are a few hundred meters, a mile offshore. Uh, they are certainly within range of many of the weapons that Hamas has. The problem is, is that, you know, not only do those young men and women who are American servicemen who are putting this, you know, peer together before it's put ashore by the Israelis, they're carrying weapons. But what he really means is that there are weapons on the warships offshore. If Hamas attacks American soldiers, the self-defense proposition is going to come down to do we shoot back or do we let it happen? And if they shoot back, I'm reasonably sure from everything that I've seen over the past six months and certainly all of my military career, that Hamas is not going to shoot from a hilltop. They're going to shoot from the rooftop of a hospital or a school or something else. And the Americans are going to be faced with either taking the fire or committing an atrocity that Hamas can turn on us. Now, I think that's also a very important point to to bring up with this. And going back to what you're saying, you know, you have, if I heard you correctly, you have experiences, uh, a combat engineer. So going abroad and building and making things right. So we have this pier being built and now it's already doubled in cost. But, you know, it, uh, is this just part of, like you said, a lot of the issues that already are somewhat inherent in this project? Uh, the, the issues are just, there's just so many of them. I mean, we're, we're building this pier in cooperation with the Israelis who are at war with Hamas. It's supposed to push humanitarian aid through. Among the other missions I've done overseas are humanitarian aid missions. And it's just so hard when one side decides to use food and suffering as a weapon. It's so hard to push through that humanitarian aid without overwhelming military force. And that's going to play right into Hamas's hands if the Israelis have to use overwhelming military force to push humanitarian aid through. And we're certainly not in a position to provide that overwhelming force. It, you know, President Biden is trying to thread the needle here between people who want to support Israel and, and people who want to support Hamas and his party. I think he, he's really stretched himself thin on this one. And again, this is just something that no American should be at any kind of risk for this particular mission. 